Don T looked now, but gold just finished its best year since 2011 metals investors may have missed it given the gloomy sentiment that plagued markets for much of 2017, but gold just finished its best year since 2011. Perhaps in a year like the one just passed, 13% gains are simply not inspiring. U.S. stocks finished about 25% higher for the year, and cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin left all other asset classes in the dust. Bitcoin gained roughly 1,400%. Die-hard gold bugs enter 2018 waiting for crypto bugs and stock bulls, to see the value of precious metals. Fortunately, precious metals have served reliably both as an inflation hedge and as a safe haven for most of recorded history. It looks less and less probable investors will get through another 12 months, while ignoring both inflation and market risk simultaneously. While other markets were finishing 2017 strong, the US dollar ended the year with a whimper. The dollar fell 10%, its worst performance in more than a decade. That weakness has yet to manifest itself as price inflation in consumer goods and services. It has instead shown up in asset prices. Consumers have yet to feel their dollars getting weaker, which may explain much about why a traditional inflation hedge like gold isn't getting a lot of attention. That may change in the months ahead, particularly if President Donald Trump can add his debt-financed infrastructure spending program to the tax cuts recently passed. Both initiatives represent fiscal stimulus for Main Street and a shift from Wall Street-oriented monetary policy including quantitative easing. Fiscal stimulus programs should contribute to more weakness in the dollar as deficits and borrowing increase. Yes, the Republican-led Congress could insist on spending reductions elsewhere to compensate for tax reduction and infrastructure spending, but only the most naive would consider that a genuine likelihood. If the dollar loses another 10% in the year ahead, metals ought to be significant beneficiaries even if most aren't paying attention to that possibility. The recent strength in precious metals may be signaling that price inflation is on the way. The Federal Reserve has been raising the Fed funds rate for more than two years, thus far with very little impact on bond yields and interest rates on consumer loans. When dealing with markets as centrally planned as ours are, anything is possible in the short term. Yet, in our view, the most likely alternative to inflation, as a driving force in markets over the coming months is asset deflation. If investors aren't talking about trip-roaring asset markets at this time next year, they may be talking about bubbles popping instead. There are certainly a number of bubbly markets and a near total disregard for risk. That is a potent combination. Either way. Don't expect the metals markets to go unnoticed in 2018. Harvard-trained economist comes out swinging against the gold bugs in 2018. Harry Dent says gold bugs have two fatal flaws. We believe gold is a store of value, and we are ignorant of the dollar. Then Harry adds a bonus third flaw everybody's favorite Harvard-trained economist has come out swinging in early 2018. Perhaps you will recall that Harry Dent has been forecasting for years that gold is dropping to $400. Recently, last year he has upped his price target, presumably adjusting for inflation, to a gold price of $700. Check out our archives page on Harry Dent to see all of his calls, which also include market crashes based off of the surge in sunspot activity, which ironically, actual scientists are saying there is a decline in sunspot activity.
Well, today Harry is out with a new forecast, and it has super bullish for the US dollar. He rests the bottom line from Harry via investing.com. I have reason to believe that it is going to have a substantial rally again in 2018. Excuse me. Again? Now I am no FX expert, I am no mathematician, and I am certainly no Harvard trained economist. Ive only graduated from UNC Chapel Hill, and a couple more lesser known schools of higher education and they wouldn't he even let me create my own major. So I am pretty sure my education is subpar, and my memory is most likely blurred by the fog of war. Literally, but I do believe that the US dollar index, as represented by Decker dollar sign DXY, going from 103 to 91 over the last year is not a rally. Nonetheless, Harry is not pulling any punches. In fact, in Harry S. Corner is the fact that he has been right about both gold and the dollar ever since 2008, so he says. See for yourself from the same investing article, the reality is that I've been right about both gold and the dollar since the 2008 crisis. He and his fellow gold bugs have maintained that gold prices would soar to the moon and dollar prices tank as the greatest money printing scheme in history unfolded. And in case anybody isn't he convinced that gold bugs are wrong, Harry offers a third fatal flaw, as a bonus, and puts all of our flaws in a nice numbered list, for all to see. Really, gold bugs get three very important things dead wrong, they think, that because we have been printing money at unprecedented rates, the dollar will crash, likely dropping close to zero. Either they re-smoking some good pot, or they don't understand that currencies trade relative to each other, and therefore cannot drop to zero, unless they fail like in Zimbabwe which is rare. They believe money printing at such high rates will cause hyperinflation at some point especially when central banks continue to escalate their efforts exponentially during the next financial crisis. The trouble with that is, it has been nine years since QE and unprecedented stimulus efforts began, and countries the world over have barely been able to stave off deflation. That is because we re in a deflationary period of declining money velocity from the aftermath of the greatest debt bubble in history. And if we fall into an even deeper crisis, as they and I predict, especially after such massive money printing, it will be a sign that none of it works. Tell me, how are central banks going to sell their plan to Joe Public to go from printing $12 trillion globally to $100 trillion to stave off the next crisis after the last $12 trillion failed? There is just no way. And perhaps the most egregious of all, they think that governments are on a never-ending inflation campaign to devalue the dollar and make their debts cheaper to pay off. I'll grant you, there is an element of truth to that. After all, who wouldn't he want to make their debts cheaper? But the fact of the matter is that the dollar hasn't been devalued to the extent they expound they re. Always throwing around the classic chart that shows that adjusting the dollar for the expansion of dollars since 1900 has resulted in the greenback being devalued 97%. It has all letter tripe. In a humble response to Harry, and his self-proclaimed forecasting par excellence, if the stated go love the two herds of the greenback is to devalue the dollar as purchasing power by 2% per year, in and of itself there would be no money printing at unprecedented rates even necessary. Though we do suggest Harry study history, and the fact that there are only three ways out of debt cut spending, which governments want to raise taxes, which can only bring in so much, or hyperinflate it away, which is always always the case, because politicians are elected, and want to get re-elected. 
We would ask Harry to perhaps study Weimar Germany for precedence, Zimbabwe, of late, or maybe just take a trip to Venezuela. Hyperinflation is the inevitable outcome of out-of-control government spending and debt. That's exactly the campaign the government is on, elimination of debt via inflation. But perhaps he hasn't he heard the Fed's stated objective recently, or over the last several years. And when we see gold hit pieces, like this in mainstream investment websites, no the end of the gold and silver price manipulation is near. And for that, we thank Harry for the tip-off. Stack accordingly half dollar. Inflation hedge, and, as a safe haven for most of recorded history. It looks less and less probable investors will get through another 12 months, while ignoring both inflation and market risk simultaneously. While other markets were finishing 2017 strong, the US dollar ended the year with a whimper. The dollar fell 10%, its worst performance in more than a decade. That weakness has yet to manifest itself as price inflation in consumer goods and services. It has instead shown up in asset prices. Consumers have yet to feel their dollars getting weaker, which may explain much about why a traditional inflation hedge like gold isn't getting a lot of attention. That may change in the months ahead, particularly if President Donald Trump can add his debt finance to bugs in 2018. Harry then says gold bugs have two fatal flaws, we believe gold is a store of value, and we are ignorant of the dollar. Then Harry adds a bonus third flaw everybody's favorite Harvard-trained economist has come out swinging in early 2018. Perhaps you will recall. That Harry Dent has been forecasting, for years, that gold is dropping to $400. Recently. Last year he has upped his price target, presumably adjusting for inflation, to a gold price of $700. Check out our archives page on Harry Dent to see all of his calls, which also include market crashes based off of the surge in sunspot activity, which ironically, Actual scientists are saying there is a decline in sunspot activity. Well, today Harry is out with infrastructure spending program to the tax cuts recently passed. Both initiatives represent fiscal stimulus for Main Street, and a shift from Wall Street oriented monetary policy including quantitative easing. Fiscal stimulus programs should contribute to more weakness in the dollar, as deficits, and borrowing increase. Yes, the Republican-led Congress could insist on spending reductions elsewhere to compensate for tax reduction and infrastructure spending, but only the most naive would consider that a genuine likelihood. If the dollar loses another 10% in the year ahead, Metals ought to be significant beneficiaries even if most aren't paying attention to that possibility. The recent strength in precious metals may be signaling that price inflation is on the way. The Federal Reserve has been raising the Don T look now. But gold just finished its best year since 2011 metals investors may have missed it given the gloomy sentiment that plagued markets for much of 2017, but gold just finished its best year since 2011. Perhaps in a year like the one just passed, 13% gains are simply not inspiring. U.S. stocks finished about 25% higher for the year, and cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin left all other asset classes in the dust. Bitcoin gained roughly 1,400%. Die-hard gold bugs enter 2018 waiting for crypto bugs and stock bulls, 
to see the value of precious metals. Fortunately, precious metals have served reliably both as an added funds rate for more than two years, thus far with very little impact on bond yields and interest rates on consumer loans. When dealing with markets as centrally planned as ours are, anything is possible in the short term. Yet, in our view, the most likely alternative to inflation, as a driving force in markets over the coming months is asset deflation. If investors aren't talking about trip-roaring asset markets at this time next year, they may be talking about bubbles popping instead. There are certainly a number of bubbly markets, and a near total disregard for risk. That is a potent combination. Either way, don't expect the metals markets to go unnoticed in 2018. Harvard-trained economist comes out swinging against the gold 